Hello and welcome to another GCSE revision video. In this video we're going to be looking at hemispheres and frustums. Although, the word frustum is from the Latin meaning piece cut off. So we can actually think of a hemisphere as a spherical frustum. Now the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. The prefix hemi means half. So the curved surface area of a hemisphere is just 4 pi r squared divided by 2, which is 2 pi r squared. Now if the hemisphere is a solid and not a hollowed out bowl, then we also need to take into account the circular top or base depending on which way up it is. So the total surface area is 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared which is the area of the circular base or top. So, well 2 plus 1 is 3 so that means the total surface area is 3 pi r squared. Now the volume of a sphere is 4 pi r cubed over 3. So the volume of a hemisphere is just half of the volume of a sphere, which is 4 pi r cubed over 6, which simplifies down to 2 pi r cubed over 3. Now in the case of a square-based pyramid frustrum, we're basically just looking at a square base pyramid or pentahedron uh, with the top chopped off. Now like all 3D objects the surface area is the sum of the area of all the faces. So in this case you have the area of the square base plus the area of the square top plus the area of the trapezium faces. Again if you're American that's trapezoidal faces. So in this specific case of a square based pyramid frustum, what we've got is the top and bottom, which are rectangles. So that's just the length and width of the top and bottom rectangles. And then we add to that the area of the four trapezium faces. Now the area of a trapezium is the short length plus the long length divided by 2 multiplied by the height of the trapezium which in this case is labelled S. It's, it's the slope length. Now because there's four of them we could basically say that's the perimeter of the small rectangle plus the perimeter of the large rectangle all divided by 2 and then the whole thing is then multiplied by the slope length. I really don't want you to memorize the particular formulas here. Uh, I gave you an example in this um, slide but what I'd rather you do is just grasp the concept that the surface area of any three-dimensional object is just the sum of the surface area of each face. Now the easiest way to calculate the volume of a frustum is to think of the whole shape and calculate the volume of the whole shape and then subtract the volume of the piece that has been cut off. Now the piece that's been cut off should be mathematically similar to the larger shape and this works the same for a conic frustrum as it does for the frustrum of a pyramid whether it's a square based pyramid a uh, regular tetra or any kind of tetrahedron or uh, a octagonal based pyramid any kind of pyramid will it will work just the same okay well so much for the theory let's have a go at putting this into practice uh, I've managed to find this question on an actual GCSE sample paper. Uh, why don't you have a look at it and see what you think. 
It says a frustum is made by removing a small cone from a large cone as shown in the diagram. The frustum is made from glass. The glass has a density of 2.5 grams per centimetres cubed. Work out the mass of the frustum. Give your answer to an appropriate degree of accuracy. I'll leave you with that one. Uh, why don't you pause the video, have a think about it, and when you're ready to hear the answer, just press play. Okay, so how did you get on with that question? Alright, we're told a frustrum is made by removing a small cone from a large cone as shown in the diagram. The frustrum is made from glass. The glass has a density of 2.5 grams per centimetres cubed. Work out the mass of the frustrum. Give your answer to an appropriate degree of accuracy. Okay, so our first job is to get the mass of the, or not the mass, the volume of the large cone and then we'll subtract the volume of this small cone here, the bit that's been chopped off, and that will give us the uh, volume of the frustrum. So let's start off with the large one. So the volume of the large, I'm going to put large. Well, that's just one third pi, that should say three, pi r squared h. And that's not something you really need to memorize because it's actually given to you in the question. Uh, you will often find that the volume of the cone is given, or the volume of a pyramid or whatever, is given to you in your exam. So that, that's not a high priority to memorize. So the large uh, cone is 1 over 3 times pi times the height which is 15 times r squared now the diameter is 12 centimeters so the radius is going to be 6 centimetres, that's just half of 12. So that's times 6 squared, which is 36. Well, that one third could cancel with that 15 to make 5. So that's just 5 times 36 times pi. So I make that 180 pi. I basically split the 36 into 6 times 6, and I did 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 times 6 is 180. So that's 180 pi centimetres cubed. Now, what about the small one that we've got to subtract well if I draw a line down here and if I label this as our radius which is 6 now this height here is just 15 centimetres minus 10 centimetres, so that's 5 centimetres. And that's this little height here. Now this whole height is 15 centimetres, which we already know from here. So the radius of this small one, because it's mathematically similar, this value r is actually going to be 5 fifteenths of 6 so r is it was because the two shapes are mathematically similar you see so we're reducing the this height 
from 15 to 5 so we've got to reduce this length here from 6 to 5 over 15 times 6 so that's 5 over 15 times 6 if you can't do that in your head that's fine you can use a calculator I think this question was actually on a calculator paper however I'm going to say that 5's into 15 actually goes 3 uh, 5 becomes 1 and 15 becomes 3 so this is actually one third of 6 which is 2 so this is just 2 centimeters so R is equal to 2 centimeters so the volume of the small cone I'll just put volume small is equal to one third of pi times two squared because that's r squared is now two squared times the height which is five so that's equal to four times five divided by three times pi which is twenty over three pi so the volume of the frustrum I'll put vol frost not that anyone can read it anyway is 180 pi centimeters cubed minus 20 over 3 pi And I think the easiest thing to do here is just to grab the calculator. There's no point wasting time trying to simplify this and get the exact answer. We might as well just get an approximate answer with a calculator. Okay, so I have my calculator. So let's just do 180 times pi. And that's 565.5. I'm going to put 565. Actually, I'll make it 4.8. Why not? Uh, centimeters cubed. And that's minus 20 over 3 pi. So again, I'm going to need my calculator. Okay, so I have my calculator. So I'm just going to click minus 20 times pi divided by 3 so that whole thing comes to 544.54 centimeters cubed I didn't have time to take in what the rest of the display was but that should be close enough Okay, so we've got our volume. So now all we need to get is the mass. Uh, the density of the glass is 2.5 grams per centimetres cubed. So the mass is equal to 2.5 grams per centimetres cubed multiplied by 544.54 centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's per centimeters cubed cancels with the centimeters cubed. So we're just going to be left with the units of grams, which is very reassuring since we're looking for mass. So all we need is to take the display on our calculator and multiply by 2.5. 
Okay, so I have my calculator, so I'm just going to multiply by 2.5. That's 1361.35, whatever. So 1361.36. And lastly, it says, give your answer to an appropriate degree of accuracy. Well, it's 10 centimetres is a bit ambiguous. Could be one or two sig figs. That might be a placeholder zero or it might be an actual measured zero. But this is two sig figs. This is two sig figs. This is two sig figs. So I'm going to guess that this is meant to be two sig figs. So I'm going to round my answer to two sig figs. So that's equal to 1400. Zero, zero. And don't forget the units. The units is going to be grams. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you're taking your GCSEs this year, I'd like to wish you every success with your revision and your exams. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video.